This panel today is about youth and entrepreneurship, how they're going to control and, and impact the global world in a positive way. I've got some crazy cool folks with me today from around the world, I must say. It's like all over the place. Even though you're coming from Detroit, you're originally from where? Well, I was born in the Soviet Union, which so, doesn't even yeah, exist anymore, so originally from Russia. Okay. So I'm going to let each of you introduce yourselves so I don't get it incorrect. So first, I'll start off. My name is Lynn Graft. I'm the founder of Storytelling for Entrepreneurs, and I am a video producer for the last 15 years. I'm also an entrepreneur at heart, first and foremost. So I started multiple companies, eight so far, four failures, two successes, and two in progress, just so to speak. So I focus on filming entrepreneurs for a living, capture and telling their story, and then teaching entrepreneurs how to create, tell, and share their story through storytelling for entrepreneurs. So we've got some folks today that are going to talk specifically about their backgrounds, but they're also going to talk about youth and entrepreneurship. So first, tell us, introduce yourself and what your company does. Absolutely. So my name is Jenny Fedorovich. Um, I own a company called uh, Arcadius Productions. We do video production, network television shows, and films. Our flagship show is going into season seven on PBS, and it's a show called Startup, where we travel across America and we interview entrepreneurs, and they could be youth, they could be in their second career, and everything in between. Our show is distributed actually globally in 44 countries. There's quite a bit of interest in launching businesses and looking how people do it in America. Um, that's in a nutshell what we do, so I'm pretty familiar with entrepreneurship and the landscape of American entrepreneurship in particular. When I was reading her background, now I've filmed 500 entrepreneurs over the last 15 years, and I thought that was impressive. And I think she's filmed like 4,000 small business owners. Is that how many so Well, that's far? how many we've talked to. So in the casting process, interviewing process, oh. you know, to boil down that many entrepreneurs that actually end up on a show, yes, it's been quite a bit. That's a lot of stories, let me tell you from that perspective. Also with us today from SAP NextGen, I, I, every time I say that, I like saying it fast. SAP Next Gen. <laughs> SAP Next Gen. So I'm, gonna let, I'm not going to mispronounce your name. I'm, I'm going to get it throughout the day. I'll finally get it. So tell us your name and what you do with SAP. I will most certainly do that. Thank you so much, Lynn. I'm so inspired to be here in this panel today. My name is Sandra Mark, and I'm from SAP, where I'm the Chief Content Director for SAP Next Gen. It is very fun to say. It's fast forward. You can always recognize us by that symbol. And what we do is that we drive innovation with purpose based on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So we could not be more happy uh, than to host the SDG Media Zone with us here at South by Southwest at the SAP House. On top of that, I lead our Global Gender Agenda. Uh, and in that, we have partnerships together with the Female Quotient, UN Women, and Stanford Women in Data Science. So if those are organizations that you're looking to partner up with together with SAP, you know, that's what I'm here for. That's awesome. I loved her back. When you read her bio and just things about her, you, you know she has a global impact just to things you're doing. And, and I love the, the, the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation. Is that what you're involved with as well? I wish. That's oh. next on my list. Okay, next on your list. Okay, so I had that wrong. Like that. So Sissel, she's coming all the way from Denmark, Copenhagen specifically, and she's with the Startup Guide. Tell us what you do and what they do. Yeah, again, double what Sandra said. I'm very happy to be here as well. Uh, it's seems like a very interesting panel. It's like looking forward to the discussions we're going to have. So my name is Cicel and I'm the founder and the CEO of Startup Guide. And Startup Guide was created five years ago with the vision, simple vision to empower and inspire entrepreneurs to start business anywhere in the world. Uh, we are known as the analogy of uh, the startup, uh, the lonely planet for startups. So basically what we do is we actually produce physical books for different ecosystems around the world, mapping out what is happening there, who is the accelerators, the investors, the startups, the academia, and so on, but do it in a way where they tell the stories. So we have kind of two really goals. We want to highlight local role models, and we want to democratize innovation, because I think it's very interesting to see now that innovation can really happen anywhere, but it's not everywhere that they get the same spotlight, and we want to be part of changing that. And you have 20 titles so far, is that we correct? We have 30 titles. Now. 30 titles, oh wow. Well, so they, they're considered like the lonely planet of entrepreneurship, so to speak. Well, today's panel is all about youth entrepreneurship and the positive impact that it's going to make on the planet. So from your perspective, we'll, we'll start with you, Jen. Tell us, since you've been around a lot of small business owners, how do you see this next generation? And we'll say young, you know, maybe teens, early 20s. How do you think they are truly going to have 
a global impact that has been different from generations past? That's a really great question. And since you said that, I've been thinking about that. Um, I think the difference is we're dealing with really different set of problems now in this world. I think with the emergence of technology, I think with the world changing, the world has moved on in a way that to really be able to solve those problems, we need to have young, fresh outlooks. And I think what's happening is, in a society in general, you know, as youth is educated, especially in the United States, it's a society of conformity. Conform, conform, conform. And when people talk about creativity, they talk about music, they talk about drawing. But entrepreneurship is creativity that meets capitalism. That's essentially what it is. And I think with youth, there are so many creative solutions to what the problems are. And we see that. I've interviewed plenty of young entrepreneurs. They come up with things that are mind-blowing because they see things in a different way. So I think it's going to be very important to engage the youth. I think we'll also see a lot more of the youth engaging because they're able to see people just like them, kids just like them doing these things. Because ultimately, that's what's important. It's representation. It's being able to see yourself and go, wow, this kid is just like me. And he just started this company. And that's what he's doing. I can achieve my dream, too. So I think engaging them is extremely important. So you talk about engaging them. I feel like, Sandra, it's like we're talking to you. We're engaging you. You represent uh, probably the youngest person on this panel here, just by a year or so. <laughs> Looking so old nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> so you are, and now you're reaching no longer young anymore. And I'm not saying that from an entrepreneurship perspective. Age, you're very young. But tell I us about... I stopped receiving my early talent emails from SAP. Oh. So... I'm no longer considered as young in the company, I think. <laughs> so tell us about that generation that you were right, right shoulder to shoulder with on a regular basis. How you see that being them have a different perspective as much as Jen was talking about. I am so fired up by the youth and incorporating the youth into corpor corporate you know, environments and communities uh, because I see that they come with a completely different perspective and we're actually transforming corporations and enterprise for the better. Uh, we're bringing in purpose. We're bringing in you know, sustainability. It's core to you know, my generations and the duration, generation after me's core beliefs. And uh, we actually don't want to, frankly, work for a company that doesn't believe in uh, impacting the world, not just with business outcomes, but with societal outcomes. Um, and, uh, you know, that's something that I'm very passionate about building a bridge to. Uh, and I get super excited uh, when, when SAP is able to host events and conferences where the majority uh, represented in the audience is, is youth, because that's also our future buying centers. So I don't look at it as, oh, we didn't touch as much pipeline with this event. I'm like, that is the future pipeline, and they're going to make such big change, not just financially for our company, but societally. Uh, so that's something that I'm super excited about. And before joining SAP, I was actually an entrepreneur myself. I never worked for a big corporation uh, before working at SAP. I started my first company when I was 18, uh, and I was an entrepreneur until I was 24 and, and, and joined SAP five years ago. What's, from that perspective, what's amazing is that, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, some corporations had uh, some level of sustainability initiatives. And a lot of it was lip service. They were just trying to have, you know, look good for, for business sakes, for Wall Street's sake, and just for the communities in general. And now it has become a requirement that they have to be doing something that has a positive impact in the world because of what you just said. Companies, it, young people do not want to work for corporations of any size that doesn't have a compact. But you see that in interviews when you talk to them, and just like you said, it's part of their makeup and what they're looking for. Cecil, so, so tell us your perspective about the future generation of entrepreneurship. Well, that have always been my biggest passion because you know you can touch you can imp you can touch the people that have already you know the courage and have started businesses. What I think is the most interesting part is the people that want to. And what is very crucial for me is that around ninety percent of all startups fail within three years. Ninety percent that that is a lot. You know, if you can change that number, that's one thing. If you then can change that number and say, when you think about building a business, you think about not only making a profit, but also making a societal, a societal change. And, and that is kind of the core. And when, when, I, when, I, when I look out of the, the world today, I, I sometimes get really scared. But then there is very, very, very young people that are starting to make so much noise, especially in Europe right now, that I kind of feel everything is going to be okay. Because they 
are the future. And, and they can really impact the decision makers. And you see it now from the millennial generation that we, I think, <laughs> to some extent represent. That when I, when I started Startup Guide was in 2014, but I moved to Bill in 2012. And that was just after the financial crisis. And it was after that we have seen leaders be so irresponsible to the future, be so selfish in a way that, you know, no ethics to what is. And, and suddenly you saw a generation saying, I'm not going to work for these guys again. I want to do things differently. And with then, back then, that the technology and you have suddenly you could sell products on Amazon, you could build a website in a second, you know, this whole entrepreneurial mind start, you know, blowing up, not only US, where it was known for, but in the rest of the world. And I think for me, that was very a crucial change in around 2010 to 2014, 15. And now we see the consequences of all that. We see that suddenly South by uh, biggest uh, event is the interactive event. So, you know, something has definitely changed and the youth are driving that. I, I love the, the ripple effect that you kind of expand upon. It just, it, it just keeps multiplying. It's like this virus that catches on. And the great thing about youth is they are infectious with their energy. I remember my first company hiring interns right out of school because they had this level of optimism that people that get jaded in the workplace, you know who you are. But <laughs> when, they, when you come out of school, you think there are no limits in what is possible at all. And I think that's what's unique about the young generation, to your point, is they're like, everything's possible. Let's just do it. Let's go make it happen. Forget about what can't be done. They don't see what can't be done because they haven't encountered a lot of those obstacles. Okay. So the next part, whoop, I just busted a water glass there. Okay. So I just had a book. This is my plug. Carrie asked me to hold this up last time a little bit longer so she could take a picture of it. So this is my new book. It's called Start With Story. Shameless plug here. But the reason I'm bringing this up with you, this is a book that teaches entrepreneurs how to create their story because a story is one of the most powerful assets you have as an entrepreneur. So I'm in frame there. Okay, i got to make sure I'm out of frame. So story is one of the powerful assets that you have as an entrepreneur. So the next part we're going to talk about here is each of us knows some entrepreneurs that have had an impact on the globe already. And you, you think about what when Mark Zuckerberg started Facebook in his dorm room. And I think of the folks, uh, there's a group of teens out of Canada, and they decided to launch an apparel company. But what's unique about this company is that for every piece of apparel that you purchase, they plant 10 trees. So that type of thinking is, it, it is such a bigger perspective than we had growing up, maybe perspective. Maybe not every, maybe, maybe you had the same thing. I didn't. I was just trying to make a buck. But tell us about, let's start with you, Cecil. If you can think of someone that you know in the past currently that's doing big things or has done big things at a young age? So I got, when, when, when you sent the questions, I got to think about two people. There is, um, there is an amazing guy that are cleaning the oceans right now together with Mask, which is one of the big corporates, right? And he just started out, I think he was 19 or something, and just said, I'm just going to do this. I don't know how much I can do with it. <laughs> and suddenly it became massive, right? And Mask joined on. Um, that's more an entrepreneurial uh, thing. But I think something that have really affected me over the last couple of months uh, was, uh, I guess we all know her, Greta Thunberg. She's not necessarily an entrepreneur. She's more like an activist. But I think that this is exactly what we need right now. We need somebody that can, you know, really... Uh, kind of change the way we talk about problems. So we all know there's problems, right? We all know them, we talk about them here, we sit in panels and so on, we talk that they exist. But sometimes you really need to make consequences of these problems. And I think that was what she did so well. She said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna strike every Friday in front of the Swedish parliament until that they are gonna you know, change the system, right? And in the beginning, people laughed of her, but then suddenly that triple effect that we just talked about started throughout whole Europe. And now, more than ever, we're talking about impact investment. We are talking about sustainable startups coming up with technologies that can, you know, make, make solutions for, for any kind of uh, climate action change and so on. And I think that that is the really crucial part that we have the technology today, 
we have it. We just really need the inspiration and the empowerment of what should we focus our time and, and money on, right? And I think that that's why I'm so grateful that a 16-year-old girl decided to do this because she somehow changed the way we look at the problems that it's, we cannot talk about anymore. We have to act now. Share, tell us your, someone you can think of. That's so powerful. Such, so have, both those are such powerful. So I mean, visually, I can see them on the news right now, and I'm like, oh my God, what was I doing when I was 16 or 18 compared to what they're doing? I know it's incredible. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take it back a notch and go a little bit more local, even though you are glo globally scaling right now, Cecil. Uh, I'm actually gonna talk about Cecil, uh, who started Startup Guide. Um, how many years ago now? Uh, soon five. Five years ago. Um, and you had a vision and a dream to interconnect, you know, the entrepreneurial ecosystem. And then I think that you went through a big transformation a couple of years ago when you encountered the global goals. And you're like, how can I use my influence and power and network to to make sure that they do things sustainably going forward? That they use, you know, entrepreneur like being an entrepreneur as a platform to create good and use the global goals as a framework from the get-go, from the beginning of launching a company. Um, and I think, you know, that's what it takes to really turn things around. It is to like adopt this amazing framework that has been designed for us, for everyone in the world, uh, not just for companies, it's for citizens, it's for NGOs, it's for, you know, startups, uh, and, and just really make sure that they build on top of that framework and build from the get-go on that. And you did that with your startup, so I wanted to highlight that first. And then we had an incredible breakfast this morning here at the SAP house at South by Southwest with the World Food Program, uh, where we hosted uh, an incredible entrepreneur called Jasmine who started Gooder, uh, which is a company that is actually part of the SAP.io foundry. Um, and uh, basically what the company does is that they take uh, waste food around the world in big cities, and they make sure that it's redistributed in, in places where they actually need it. And it sounds so simple, it sounds like an NGO, uh, but you can actually scale this and make it profitable if you bring it to the right enterprise channels, right? So that's what we're doing at SAP, and that's where we can impact at scale. Uh, so I want to have more you know, use cases like you, Cecil, with the startup guide, transforming an entire global startup ecosystem to be purpose-driven. Um, and I want to see more startups that have been historically considered as NGOs or for good companies uh, to, to actually prove that they can be so much more than that and that we can create business outcomes and societal outcomes at the same time. I, I love that perspective. Someone young right out of the gate is saying, I'm going to do this company and change the world with it. I mean, I hear that so much when I'm talking to entrepreneurs. Do something.org. That's also something. It's powerful. when they, that, I just love that energy and that optimism that they exude when they want to do this. Okay, Jen, tell us your perspective on a great story. You've seen a lot of stories. One of them that comes to mind about a young entrepreneur <clears throat> making some global impact. Actually, a couple come to mind, um, if you don't mind. So one is, um, it was a 16-year-old girl in season two of my show that completely blew me away. Because just like you said, what was I doing at 16 years old? I certainly was not launching a company that potentially will change the world, which is what she did. She, she is a daughter of Nigeria immigrants, uh, you know, first generation came to America, was in high school, and she found this really big problem. It was really hard to apply to colleges. Uh, you had to fill out a million applications. So uh, her and her high school friends started a company called Plucked Admissions, where by filling out one application only, it would apply you to so many colleges at the same time. And it will also tell you what kind of scholarships you could potentially get. Think about the scale of that. And what a great idea. Yes, it was her problem. But she was instantly able to give all of these high school kids an ability to do this. And next thing you know, she's charging colleges $50,000. I'm like, what? You're 16 years old. You're charging colleges $50,000. Like, at 16 years old, I couldn't even fathom doing something like this. So she is really just an amazing entrepreneur. And the second person, I would say, uh, it was this season, uh, it's called, the company's called Mobility Designed. Uh, they started this very young. And they set out to change something that hasn't been changed in over 114 years, which is they designed a new crutch. It seems so simple, right? 
But crutches have not been redesigned for 114 years. And people have been using this tool that's so outdated and so painful because it's actually under your arm. And he watched his father suffer throughout his whole entire life because he lost his leg, his father, and he set out to do something. He said, I'm going to change this industry that's so antiquated. And they've launched this crutch actually last year. It's called Mobility Design. They're shipping worldwide. And they're having a tremendous impact on people. I mean, just stories like this, right? How many people would set out to change something that you think has just been there for so many years, right? And it's the medical industry. You're a young person. How are you going to take on that? But they do. And, and that's incredible. Yeah, again, that optimism, like, let's just change it. Because they don't see how uh, the industry has been mundane or just hasn't changed. Like, no, let's fix it. Let's fix the problem. So, um, Sandra, I wanted to ask you, kind of the, some of the challenges that young folks are going to take. And like even with the, the ocean cleanup project. So I, I love his enthusiasm and some of the things, if I was to go back and tell him a couple advice from the beginning, is that a lot of people, the, the scientists specifically, attacked him right away, saying this is not going to solve the problem. You're, you're, you're t this is the wrong thing. Um, you really need to go after the source. Or you're only capturing the top layer. So all these insults and things kept throwing at them. And later on, I think he f reframed his narrative in terms of what I'm saying. He goes, I remember him saying in an interview, I'm going to be doing something. And it's so much more than everybody else. So just a little twitch of the frame, when, instead of saying I'm going to clean up the oceans with the Ocean Cleanup Projects, he goes, I'm going to do something. We're going to attack that first layer. Everybody join me and help me get the rest of it out there. But even when he said, I'm going to clean the ocean, already there, he impacted people to think about every time they throw something away, mm. right? So it's, it's like sometimes it's like, you know, the story is also enough to make an impact. Sorry, I just wanted to make that comment. And, and that is a great clar clarification because what I wanted to bring this next phrase or the next form of the, the discussion here is if we're going to impart some in advice from things that we've had, we, all of us have had arrows in our back from being an entrepreneur, um, and most companies failing, including I've had a number of failures as well. What advice would you give to help that next person doing an ocean clean, cleanup project or the next person coming up with a, a device that's going to help someone live a more quality of life? What advice would you give them? That's such a great question. Um, I can speak to an SAP perspective of the platforms that we're building everywhere in the world. I think in order to become successful, you need a great network, you need a platform, you need a space, you need connectivity and access. And that's something that we're working on constantly from SAP side to make sure that our ecosystem can facilitate. And with our customer network of 400,000 plus you know, enterprises, we also have you know, potential revenues and clients for the entrepreneurs. And we have you know, this great ecosystem that are also so hungry for innovation that we can help feed with new ideas coming from all these young entrepreneurs and new startups uh, emerging in the markets and different industries. Uh, and, and that's where we become the connector at SAP Next Gen. We, come, we become the platform layer that can help launch and accelerate uh, a young person's dream, a young person's idea uh, to the next level. Uh, Cecil, share what are your thoughts on how you might help reframe or give them advice on those challenges they're going to face? Yeah, because I think you mentioned a good example, right? Like the, the scientist comes in. And I think especially if we want to really change the world and some of maybe the climate change area and so on, we need, we need experts, right? And I think sometimes what I, I think that I see is that between academia and entrepreneurship, there's way too big of a gap, right? Because the academia says that cannot be done. <laughs> the entrepreneur says, yes, it can. And to some extent you have to meet in the middle, right? So I think that that's some of the things that I would like to see more in the future that, you know, that the academia needs to change in order to be, you know, more adaptable for entrepreneurs. And the entrepreneurs has to see more the value of the sciences and talk the same language in a sense, right? And I think what Sandra is mentioning as well, I think that, that the big corporation have in a long time wanted to work with startups, uh, in the narrative before was like, I'm just gonna buy them up when they're big enough and then, you know, kind of milk the cow, right? Now it's kind of seeing that if a startup is having a technology 
that will never be able to scale unless they have somebody like SAP taking them under the wings. That has an impact. You know, that is where we see, okay, now we multiple, not only the, the, profitable, uh, the, the, the profit, but also the impact. So I think that the corporation plays a really important role as well. And the last, I would say, the governments has to play a role. The leaders has to play a role. They have to start being leaders for the young generation and say, we want to change this with you as well. So infrastructure has to change. You know, like, uh, there is so much money into this impact space. There's just like, it's so hard to figuring out, you know, how to distribute them in, in, in a sense, right? So governments also can play a huge role there because they are, you know, local in a sense, right? That's what we do. We go into cities, we partner with governments, with corporates and with startups, and we suddenly see that in that circle, that's where the gold are, because they all need to work together. Yeah, that's awesome. It's like number 17 of the SDG goals is partnerships, partnerships yeah. and taking advantage of those partnerships. And I think these, what's also different with the next generation is that access to partnerships is so much easier and promoted and done than it was 15, 20 years ago. A lot of young people didn't think about approaching corporations. They were just, they were big corporations, so we can't touch them. And now it's like, who's going to help me? SAP, come on, let's go. And SAP is like, okay, we'll help you. Just tell us what we need. Jenny, tell us from your perspective what challenges you can help them with. Well, first of all, I think to your point, everybody fails. I failed. I'm sure everybody has failed at some point. So every I, single day. Every, <laughs> so it's it, it's learning to be okay with failure. That's the first number one thing. And walking away from it, going, what have I learned from this? Because that's what we do. And I think failing at a young age might be more more painful, but it's okay to fail. You're going to fail regardless. It could be a business. It could be a personal life. Something is going to happen along the way. So to be able to accept that and to move on and learn from that is very important. And I think also what's happening is whether it's your startup guide, the book, whether it's your book that teaching uh, people how to tell stories, I think there's so many resources out there. It's make sure you go out there, look for those resources. A lot of them are free and just educate yourself on what it is that you're particularly going after. Because especially challenges with young people, nobody's going to take them seriously. Because for some reason it's okay, people can go to the army at 18 years old, but when they walk into pitch a corporation a lot of times, people are not taking them seriously, and it's a challenge they're facing. And it's, it's not to be able to be afraid to do that, because that's what happens. You know, you just got to stay behind your idea. Yeah, that speaks so much to, um, there's one point that, Yesterday or uh, two days ago on a panel that we had here, uh, we're just to reiterate, we're at the SCG Media Zone in Austin, Texas for South by Southwest, sponsored by SAP and Public Foundation of Sergio around here. He's not, he's still here. But anyways, thank you guys for making this possible. Um, just been an incredible day. This is the last day of the event. Some more panels still coming up, so you can stay in tune. I'm going to give you guys a second to think about this next question, because we're kind of in the tips area, so to speak. And the, I want to ask you guys, what's the question you probably get the most frequently from young people, aspiring folks that are getting ready to start or they've just started. So for me, the question I get a lot when it comes to story, like this is my area of focus, is that a lot of folks don't think they have a story yet or they don't know what their story is or they don't think their story is all that good. And I always tell people is that everything about what you're doing is unique. Not one, So 99.9% .9 of us are very similar from a DNA perspective. But in that point, 0.0001% difference are three million unique differences from a DNA perspective. So I always get to tell young folks is that no matter what age you are, where you came from, no one has this set of knowledge that you've acquired, no one has the connections that you've amassed, or the set of experiences. So because of those three unique elements to you, each of us has a unique story. Even though we're so similar, none of us, not one person on the entire planet has that collection of knowledge, connections, and set of experiences that makes us the right person to do this right now for this very specific issue. So I'm gonna start with you, Cecil, put you on the spot there. What's one of the most frequent questions that you get when you're talking to young entrepreneurs specifically, either right before they start or right after they start their company? Can you connect me with this person? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that must be the one, but that's also the most powerful one. To be totally honest, you know, like when I started Startup Guide, I didn't want it, it to be, you know, I didn't want it 
us as a media to play an essential role in each ecosystem. I rather want to be a catalyst. So in the sense that I wanted to make sure that everybody that was there to help entrepreneurs or to connect with entrepreneurs, they were being heard, right? So I, I saw our task as the connector task in a sense, right? And, and I think that there is, you know, if you're building a health tech startup, it's different questions than when you're, you know, uh, building a coffee bean uh, waste startup, right? Like it's two different things. Like the process is probably very similar, how you tell the story and so on, but the experts you need and the investors and the accelerators and, you know, where do you find your mentors? It's different people that you need. And that's why the ecosystem is so important because in every ecosystem, these people are existing. You just need to find them, right? So I think that that's something that, that I'm trying to do, and I get a lot of requests to do intros, which I happily do. I love it. So, so in, in the States, we have Kevin Bacon's six degrees of separation from any person in the world. I bet you're one or two degrees <laughs> of separation from most people just because of what you do for a living. Jenny, tell us what's one of the most common questions you get from a young entrepreneur. How do I get on your show? <laughs> No, but besides that... <laughs> the second um, one. Uh, How do I get on the book? Tell the name of the show again so they know. Startup Television Startup Project. Startup Television. It's on PBS. Um, I think the most questions I get are, is actually about funding. I think it's funding, it's money. Um, you know, a lot of people want to know how to fund. How do they get the money? I have the favorite question for entrepreneurs that I ask myself because, you know, I think it's very difficult for people to be simple and to think in simple terms. So when I sit down with the young entrepreneurs and I try to answer all the emails, if they're in the Detroit area, I take meetings because I think mentorship is extremely important. I always ask them one question. Why? Why do you do what you do? Because I think understanding why do you do what you do is an extremely important thing. Because it's not about money. People could do a million things for money. In a minute, you become passionate about what you're doing, but really, truly passionate, not just using that word. And you know why you're doing what you're doing. I want to inspire and educate people. That's why I have a show on television. So I, I just tell them they need to boil down to the very core of what it is that they're doing. And when you go out there, whether you're asking for money, whether you're making connection, whether you're getting education, that's going to become more simple because you know what your mission is. So now you know. And people will will see you. When you're talking to them, they know that you are actually true to what you're doing and why you're doing it. That incredible just advice from that perspective, from that question. I see that all the time. Okay, Sandra, you let us know I love that. what your most common question that you get is. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say that I loved how you introed this part of the discussion. Uh, what our CEO, Bill McDermott, always says is the best thing about you is you. It's like, don't ever take the you out of you because that's what makes you the most Im important person in, to us in this company or in organization or wherever you are. Um, and also, you know, the number of lives uh, that you touch is your legacy, right? So mentorship is so important. You need to take your time to connect with people and give people as much as you can because it always comes back. And in my case, it's always come back tenfold. You know, the more I give, you know, the more I get back. And I think... I am a true believer on return on investment for karma. So, like, you know, the more positive energy you can spread out there in the world, the more will also come back to you uh, and to your cause. Um, so that's something that's really important. But I think um, to, to be very concrete and to give some tools about, you know, when young people come and, and talk to me about how do I accelerate, you know, my career or how do I become an entrepreneur, it's really about getting yourself out there. Sharing bits of yourself, you know, that, you know, maybe you hadn't thought about doing before in public, like getting a social media <laughs> presence is like number one. Um, just, you know, share a little bit about yourself and make yourself accessible uh, for the world. Uh, open you up to the world because then the world will come to you. You'll get incredible opportunities. I have, you know, countless of examples of where I've put something out on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, or whatever, and, and people have come back with advice or resources or, you know, whatever the request or idea might have been that I've just kind of shared. Um, so, so that's, I think that's one of my concrete advices that I always give to young people when, when I try to mentor, but I always feel like I'm being reverse mentored by them because I always learn so much from those conversations as well. Uh, but yeah, just a strong presence and being open to the world is, is really important. 
What's one of the common themes is I hear your responses is that each of you talk about the passion and, and, and also the ask, you know, ask for those connections, ask for mentorship, ask with passion for whatever asset you need, funding it might be. Uh, that is one of the biggest recommendations I have that they're sharing with you is don't be afraid to ask. The worst thing that someone can say is no from that perspective. That's it. You know. No is guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a great point. You're going to get no, so just get over it. Like my buddy C.J. Johnson from, from Dallas, Austin, Houston, Texas says, just treat it like water in a duck's back and let it roll right off. <laughs> okay, so to wrap up, um, I'm going to start with you, Jenny. So a little bit about your background, how you got to where you are. We only got a minute or so, so we can't go into the huge background. And what's one lesson you've learned as you share how you got here? What's one thing you'd like to impart with the next generation person? So I got to where I am today. So my family came, and I'll make it really quick. I came to the United States at 14 years old. We had um, $100 and six suitcases between three of us. And I can't say enough about the fact that I love this country because this, uh, this has truly been a land of opportunity. This has truly been, and this is what I learned in my show as well, it's a place where you can come with nothing and truly achieve everything you've set out to do if you really want to. There is no barriers like in many other countries. There is not really classism. You can, you, you can become very upwardly mobile here. It's hard work. Hard work is the key to everything. And what got me here today by all the means, passion is great, ideas are great, there doesn't a dime. Execution, I would say, is the most important thing to where I'm sitting today. It's been execution, execution, execution upon every idea I've had. And it's very hard skill to acquire. You know, you just gotta practice execution because you always have great ideas, you know? I've started companies, they failed as well. And finally something clicks because I concentrated on one thing and I executed that thing until it got successful. One of my buddies, David Gonzalez, who lives here locally, he gets to meet a number of very successful entrepreneurs because of his organization that he has. And people ask him that question, how are you successful? He goes, chop wood, carry water. Chop wood, carry water. It's execution. You have to chop wood, carry water every day to make it successful. What do you think? I love that. That's like an entrepreneur. And Cecil and I were just talking about that today. And she was like, when did it, when did it become just as hard to be in the corporate as it is to become an entrepreneur? As it is as an entrepreneur, because you know, obviously, we work a lot you work a <laughs> here lot. at SAP Next Gen, but we kind of consider ourselves as a startup as well within the corporation. Um, but execution is key. The number one thing that I always ask people that interview in our team is like, can you follow things to the door? Like, get it all the way into <laughs> inside the door? Or are you the kind of person that you know? And you know, people just have to be honest and, and say, you know, where are they? Because we can also teach for the skill, right? And that's something that, you know, that I take very seriously with our team and with my team, um, that, you know, we teach people and we make it as systematic as possible so people can actually get it all the way through and deliver it, hand signed, sealed, deliver it and everything through the door, right? Otherwise we can't do the things that we do. Um, but yeah, I think uh, number one thing for me is uh, also to be kind. Just be kind. <laughs> it's like the easiest thing in the world to do. Um, as I mentioned, your legacy is the, is the lives that you touch in your, uh, you know, during your lifetime. And um, we just need to be respectful, work with integrity, and uh, be open and open-minded and respect and love all human beings. And that's something that you know, I evangelize a lot for in my team. And uh, SAP does that you know, overall as well. So I'm really proud to be a part of a company that believes in those kind of values. I love that. Karma comes back. Be kind. It will, it will serve you 10 times over throughout the rest of your life. Exactly. Yeah. I wish we could teach that, actually. I wish we yes. could teach kindness because it's such a beautiful message. Empathy, kindness. Kindness is contagious. Yeah. That's the rumor, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Cecil? Yeah, so I think there's a million of advice, right? And I think that as you go as a founder now, I, when I started, the advice I needed when I started till the advice I, I need today is so different, right? So very different feelings. I think from, from the beginning, I think that my dad said something very interesting to me. He said, it's never get as good as you dream for, but it's also never get as bad as you fear, right? So always lay something in between. So having that in mind, I kind of said, okay, you know, it, it will work out. 
And well, kind of listening to that all over again, I also understood that some of the things you need to have while you're building a company is patience. And that was really, really hard for me, you know? <laughs> like, I was like, oh, it's like, it, can it really take that long? And yeah, it can really take that long. If you really try to truly change something and, and have a greater impact, a global impact, then it takes a long time. But the rewards, and then I think, when you kind of accept that, you also accept the journey. Then you understand that it's not the goal, but it's actually the journey that are the most you know, important thing. And then you also s start that you need to take some time off, otherwise the journey is not going to be that fun. <laughs> right, Sandra? It's on to you. Right. <laughs> I'm going to Hawaii on Saturday. So. Good. <laughs> inside joke over there. So we're going to wrap this up. So Cecil, tell where they can learn more about the Startup Guide. Where should they go? Yeah, they should just go to startupguide.com, actually. And on there, you can see all the cities we're doing and all the cities we're coming, we coming out with books in. And there's also a form if you want a, a Startup Guide to your city, you can apply for that as well. We go global with SAP, so we try to be everywhere in the world. Uh, yeah. Startupguide.com. Startupguide.com. Okay, J Jenny, where they should go for your show or anything that you're involved with? Sure. Uh, Startup-USA.com is where you can find our show. If you're on PBS, just Google Startup, and you can stream uh, You can stream our show on PBS as well. Awesome. And lastly, one of the co-sponsors of this event, want to give the floor to you. Tell us about where they can go to learn more about SAP NextGen. So go to sap.com slash nextgen or SAP NextGen on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, you name it, we're there <laughs> with you all the way. Awesome. I want to thank you guys for just being with us for the last 45 minutes. We're here at Austin South by Southwest at the SDG, zone, SDG Media Zone, sponsored by SAP and Public Foundation. And big thanks for the UN and their being an inspiration for this with the SG17 goals. It's one of the most important initiatives that's going on at a global level because it touches every single one of us. Thank you guys so much. I'm Lynn Graff, founder of Storytelling for Entrepreneurs. And go to storytellingforentrepreneurs.com to learn more about my information for my book and stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you.